declare boldly and say, the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. So maybe we can say it uh, out loud and you can just say this with me. Uh, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Uh, may this be your experience also, just like Paul, that uh, the, may the Lord stand with you and stand next to you even right now and strengthen you and uh, make you able, empower you to um, so that the message might be communicated that your life would communicate it, communicate the message of the gospel fully you know through you yeah let's uh, let's pray and get started father we we thank you lord we thank you lord that uh, you never leave you never forsake lord in and uh, um whether it's in ministry whether it's uh, or anything that we are uh, involved in god you are with us and like paul and what he experienced god uh, when everyone fors forsook him and everyone left um, lord you stood with him lord and i just pray lord may each one of us lord experience that standing uh, the Lord standing with us, you standing with us, you standing next to us. Lord, I pray that uh, may we experience today, God, that your hand upon us, your hand around us. Lord, your hand, uh, uh, Lord, your presence with us, just encouraging, the strengthening and saying, um, I am with you. Uh, you do not have to fear anything. I am with you. Lord, may we experience that, Lord, experience that I am God. It may, may we experience your presence, Lord, with us and in us and strengthening us, Lord, and uh, Lord, empowering us so that we might go beyond what we think, uh, Lord, we can do, God, that may we go beyond what we, Lord, um, uh, the, uh, the limitations, Lord, that we put on ourselves, Lord. Um, Lord, may we go beyond that, Lord. Father God, we pray that you will lead us, that you would fill us this morning, strengthen us, and continue to, Lord, uh, take us from glory to glory, from strength to strength, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory right now. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so this is class two, uh, or class three, I should say. Christian leadership. Last class, we, we looked at um, uh, just the introduction, right? We looked at... Um, uh, what leadership is and one of the ways of defining leadership not the way of defining leadership one of the ways uh, is to um, yeah, you know is, is to define it by saying that uh, leadership is about influence for good you know being an influence for good in people's lives um, to bring about change in one's thinking and behavior and to help uh, either the individual or the group collectively to to reach, accomplish uh, goals, and um, and this can be done uh, with or without an official title. Um, yeah, so yeah, I'll just uh, answer Avni's. Minute, Avni. Um, eight, seventeen, and eighteen. All right. Um. Okay, so um, so we uh, we saw the I mean we went by we we looked at the definition. Of course, we know that the scope of leadership really is really vast, and um, you know sometimes definitions can be very restrictive. Uh, we're aware of that because uh, only so much you can put in and then leave out a whole lot. But then this helps us to really uh, define uh, to really. Um, uh, Kind of encapsulate right uh, bring into focus um the heart of what leadership is so um so we looked at that and then we also you know looked at how the scope of leadership you know leadership is of our subject so we're going to focus on three areas uh, leading through time um, winning with 
uh, winning with uh, others and then teamwork right and uh, so those are three areas that we are looking at um through this uh, through these sessions okay so today uh, let's go to uh, section one and start off uh, leading through time Okay, leading through time, and we're going to look at um, uh, various aspects uh, which come under this uh, module. So we'll start with, um, you know, we'll start by looking at uh, the life of Jesus, the life of the Lord Jesus, and uh, some of the leadership insights right, that we can, uh, we can derive and how we can actually put to use uh, in our own lives. Right? So leadership as Jesus modeled it leadership as um, as Jesus um, you know uh, modeled it walked it out and and so we can look at it right so you know sometimes um, we make a differentiation between um, I don't know if you've done that but you know between uh, make a differentiation in the sense okay um, so this is what faith is this is what the church says this is what I see in the Bible and uh, but this is how I work in the real world. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've uh, kind of done that. You know, um, you know, this is what the Bible says. This is what the principles that I see in the Bible. But then, you know, in the real world, uh, I, I need to uh, work it out this way because uh, people are like this. And uh, sometimes in the back of our minds, we 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 have this nagging, you know, maybe doubt: uh, Will it really work? You know, if it works, at what cost? Right, so we are, you know, you're uh, maybe you're working for a company, maybe you're, maybe you're working, um, you know, um, uh, for an organization. Maybe it's like you're running your own business, and uh, the thing is, um, you know, if all these leadership principles, will it seem like, you know, how do I effectively work it out? You know, will it seem like I'm too soft? You know, will it really work? How uh, how do I actually do it? Right, and maybe we've had, you know, we in our own minds we've we've had uh, thoughts, ideas, and uh, and say, okay, uh, maybe this is how it is. Maybe it was, uh, uh, you know, wrongly implemented, even, right? Misplaced, um, truth misplaced, or you know, uh, truth, um, uh, you know, executed uh, in, a, in a misplaced manner. So uh, it didn't really give us the desired. Uh, result right so maybe there's this you know so we we just kind of demarket saying okay you know this guy i really need to shout him down <laughs> you know i really need to uh, uh you know this any intimidate him manipulate him and and get the work done uh, and uh, this person uh you know we, we might have you know certain things like that in our minds but um as we look at the life of jesus as we look at the leadership qualities he walked in and he spelled out there are some things that we can uh, I mean, there are many things that we can learn but if you look at life of Jesus you know here are some things that um, you know I uh, you know we, we can uh, we can conclude right now when we you know I attended once a workshop called lead like Jesus um, it's actually uh, something that was started by uh, Ken Blanchard and um, Phil Hodges, um, a resource that was put together by them. And so I uh, attended a workshop uh, and and some of which uh, is learnings from that. You know, the things that I'm sharing are learnings from that. So uh, let me just um, put that here, okay? Uh, so when we look at the life of Jesus, we see that uh, he accomplished, you know, we see him accomplishing a mission with imperfect people. Okay, just think about that. Uh, all kinds of people, different temperaments. One guy very impulsive. Uh, he's so impulsive that um, you know he jumps into water. He, he's you know some of these things he does. He draws a sword, cuts off somebody's uh, ear. Very impulsive. Uh, uh, you know, one one says, you know, even I, I, if, if I die, I will not uh, I will not deny you. Uh, and then uh, then we see him. You know, cursing and denying the Lord, not just once but thrice. You know, we, we see all kinds of things, all kinds of people. One person who's putting the money, uh, you know, putting his hand into the uh, into the treasure box and the, and the collections and using it. And, you know, okay. So he accomplished <clears throat> this mission with imperfect people. Um, 
and his ability to establish and communicate clear purpose uh, I'm sorry purpose is misspelled purpose and direction right uh, we're going to look at that we're going to look at that i think that was a, one of the first things that we're going to see the, the purpose you know he he was very clear he said uh, this is what i came to do uh, and nothing would deter him or distract him from the purpose and uh, he communicated that to the disciples though they didn't understand it okay um recruitment of people to accomplish the task okay he he selected uh, he um he recruited uh, the people uh, to accomplish the task okay so training uh, development uh, i'm just putting these things in the chat and uh, of course for the e-learning i'm just reading it out so you would also know so um training development and delegation issues he he faced that and he sorted that uh, very effectively well there was uh, there was conflict within the team you know there were people who were uh, talking about uh, who should be the greatest who should sit at the left and right and uh, there was also uh, you know they used the influence or you know they didn't use but then there was influence from the family uh, to you know to to try to get that position uh, so uh, and as a as a result the team had some conflicts so he managed that managing demands of time energy and resources right right from we see in scripture i mean it's it's amazing uh, he spent uh, the day i mean he started uh, early or you know early uh, early in the morning he started with he spent time in prayer spent time he goes to he goes by himself he comes down and it's like the whole thing starts right we we see that they're going from you know one place to another to minister and to uh, you know the teaching and the traveling and uh, it's 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 pretty hectic and um, you know he he was very good at managing the time uh, managing his energy and uh, there were times when he said okay now let's withdraw you know let's come by yourselves and then rest and uh, and he do he did that right then um dealing with competition uh, you know there were um, others who who came and uh, and and he got news of that uh, and said uh, you know there are others who are doing the same thing and who are using your name and um, and uh, very effectively he said you know he who is uh, uh, not against us he was you know he was doing the same is sorry um, he who is um, not scattering is actually gathering so let them be right and uh, of course he had faced uh, betrayal lack of understanding by uh, family members uh, he he faced that as well then there was also uh, you know if uh, you look at his life you see there there was also constant scrutiny and challenges to commitment and challenges to his integrity uh, which he handled there was all kinds of temptation right temptation satan uh, uh, for a season just uh, brought in temptation one after the other temptation to misuse uh, power temptation to give up the mission uh, ten- temptation to uh, to be turn uh, from the from uh, who he would worship and and you know, turn and and hand over their allegiance um etc right so he faced uh, temptation then um distractions um rejection criticism opposition faced that and also in his life we see that there was personal sacrifice in in serving the greatest good so you, you see that the lord jesus did all that and um, and you know if if you if you go through you know this entire list we see that you know maybe either in ministry or in life in uh, you know uh, i'm i'm just using these you know uh, terms as uh, as separate compartments but we know that it is just one thing you know you could be working in an organization and ministering and serving as well uh, you know working in a company but but i'm just uh, for the sake of differentiation you know that maybe your what is so called full time ministry or maybe you're you know working uh, uh, in an organization maybe you're running a business you're teaching you're whatever right you face all kinds of you know these kinds of challenges these are real issues these are real challenges and 
the way the lord jesus led the way the lord jesus lived his life the principles that he lived by uh, he was able to face this he was able to uh, overcome this he was able to manage these things he was able to sort these things out right so uh, so if we have any you know doubts about whether the whether the the, the actual workability of it the feasibility of the principles the leadership principles as as taught as embodied by the lord jesus then you know these are just proof that yes that we can our lives we can walk the same path right we can do that and this this works right? um and over and above over and above that you know these things you know, over and above looking at uh, looking at these as just mere principles uh, as believers you and i have an edge in the sense that we have the holy spirit indwelling us we have the who is called the spirit of revelation and wisdom and here the the spirit of revelation and wisdom imparting revelation and wisdom uh, uh for us you know moment by moment day by day uh, and uh, uh, not just that but also empowering us right empowering our choices i mean empowering us to make those uh, correct choices or those wise choices so we have all this so there's no doubt there should be no doubt that we can live by these principles okay so we're going to look at even as we look at uh, just uh, we're going to look at just seven things seven insights about um, uh, how the lord jesus led um, but, but i'm sure there will be more but we was going to look at seven things but in our minds um, we don't have to have any doubt you know uh, okay maybe certain things didn't work uh maybe there are other reasons why it didn't work there are other factors why you know things didn't work okay so so let's look at this with a uh, you know a fresh right let me share the uh, the notes um again the notes are there in the classwork section so you could um, um check that okay so just coming up on screen so let's look at um, leadership as the lord jesus modeled it okay so um uh, like we saw last class we saw that uh, the lord jesus modeled a very radical a very uh, uh, it was a very paradigm shift in leadership in the sense he came to serve he came to serve others he came as a servant leader and he was not a self serving leader but he came to serve others Right. and we see that and if we read from Matthew chapter 20 and verse 25 to 28 he 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 puts it very clearly and right? said Jesus called them to himself and said you know that the rulers of the gentiles lord it over them and those who are great exercise authority over them okay so which means that uh, the lord wasn't like ignorant of what was happening right he was pointing the disciples to what was really happening you know you know that this is the trend you know that this is the leadership style uh, of you know what we see around you know this is what happens predominantly okay uh, and 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 he's saying you know this is what it is right this is what happens this is the reality of you know what you see around verse 26 yet it shall not be so among you yet it shall not be so among you meaning that is saying guys you know it's not an option right it's not an option of course you have a free will to choose but uh it's not an option for a follower of the lord jesus for a you know disciple of the lord jesus um the lord is saying it is not an option yet it shall not be so among you okay but whoever desires to be become great among you let him be your servant and whoever desires to be first among you 
let him be your slave. And just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for any. So, um, so he, he qualified it. He said, you know, this is how it is. That um, if you want to be great, if you desire to be a great leader, if you if you desire to be uh, you know a top leader, uh, top notch leader, then this is how it is that you desire to serve, you become a servant, uh, meaning you 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 look out for the needs of others, you you fulfill that, you serve them, and uh, and this is what this is what you do, right and. Um, it's right after, actually, uh, interesting to see. It's it's right after, um, you know, the sons of Zebedee right, come and the mother comes and has this conversation. So let me just read out. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, what do you wish? She said to him, grant that these sons of mine, two sons of mine may sit one on your right and other on the left in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, you know, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? They said to him, we are able. So obviously they've had a family consultation and mother and sons and, you know, this is it. Uh, they, they said, we are able. So he said to them, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my father. And when the 10 heard it, they were greatly displeased with the two brothers. How can you even, how can you guys even think about it? How can you do this, right? Um, then Jesus brings forth this, he calls them and then he shares. Uh, so that is the context. So he's talking about, you know, um, uh, hey, let me just tell you how to be a great leader. Okay, let me just tell you how to be a, a, a top, a top-notch leader. This is how you do it. Right? You, you determine that you want to serve others. You determine, you know, to you that you that you will be a servant, that you will serve, uh, minister, and then you will be a great leader. And verse twenty-eight, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Now, whether they appreciate it, whether they, you know, uh, receive it or not, you know, the, when, when he gave his life as a ransom for many, many, it was, it was, of course, a great risk. You know, there were many who did not, who would not um, accept, who would not receive, right? But he did it anyway, right? So uh, in our serving, yeah, they may it might be it might be the reality that uh, it will be looked down upon it might not be appreciated um, but the lord gives us no option really verse 26 yet it shall not be so among you okay so the thing is to really do it with wisdom and do it in the right manner possible do it with the grace that he gives us and uh, it it need it should not be a misplaced one okay so may the lord give us understanding right uh, John chapter 13, verse 12 to 15, when he had washed his feet, taken his garments, and sat down again, he said to them, do you not know what I have done to you? Okay. You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you now in our own minds you know um, okay this is an example of serving again you know, practically he did it and he said okay this is what it is you know you ought to do as i have done to you now, i being your teacher i being your lord uh, and i i served you in this manner so as i have given you an example uh, with with this action with my life with my teaching you should do as i have done to you okay so um so he really set the bar he really set the standard uh i think we have a question okay shri um yeah go ahead shri thank you pastor yeah. pastor as you now uh, as you explain the way how uh, how to serve how jesus has um put across a you know set an example before us so um in a corporate uh 
uh, you know, a fee, a corporate area. Uh, yeah. How can this this can be implemented like you now the way how Jesus did and uh, and can we do the same way? Because, yeah, uh, it is uh, like uh, many times, uh, you know, um, people are not uh, you know the same uh, same same mindset. Same sometimes people are very rebel. Sometimes people are very arrogant. In that mm -hmm. case, how you can uh, you know how can you serve like uh, how yeah. Jesus washed the feet of the disciples? Can we do yeah. that? Whether it is really applicable or mm -hmm. uh, whether it will fun work out? I just want to know. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. So let's say uh, you know uh, um, you are you have some peers who are who who look down on you who are you know very uh, I, I don't know who are you know very abrasive very difficult to get along with uh, who are constantly undermining you or maybe trying to bring you down okay so so thing is to ask the question you know how can I serve them uh, how can I be a, a leader in in this situation with these people how can I serve them. Now, uh, the thing is, okay, the Lord Jesus also faced a similar, you know, similar challenges, right? So now the setting is, let's say, okay, it, it, the people are there. The setting is uh, maybe a formal organization. So how can I serve? Uh, you know, one thing that comes to my mind, of course, others can just weigh in who, who had, you know, had that experience. Um, one thing that comes to my mind is, okay, to find out, okay, uh, what is the challenge? What is the need this person is facing with regard to the role? Okay, with regard to the uh, work, um, does he or she need any empowerment in terms of training, in terms of skill um, that I have? What is it that I can give? Okay, uh, what is it that I can bring in? Now, um, so you so that, that that's something that you know you can think of, pray about, and say, okay, what is it in this ma manner I can serve? It could be just some act of kindness. You know, in a, in a very simple way, day-to-day -day relational thing, and just an act of kindness. Maybe a harsh word is spoken, but you don't uh, react or respond with an even harsher word, right? So uh, that is again, you know, uh, reflecting Christ-likeness. Uh, but you know, specifically when we think about serving, then you know, we can. Uh, what comes to my mind is that if they have a need, if they have a challenge, or you know, they're arises a situation where you know one needs to uh, lend a helping hand right? one needs to work together it's a team one needs to work together and uh, definitely if um, you know if there seems to be some kind of a relational tension and uh, you know the normally you know uh, you don't react in the flesh no, normally we would want to react in the flesh uh, and say okay i'm not going to you know, I'm just going to hold back information so that this person doesn't succeed, or I'm going to, uh, you know, things happen. You know, I worked in a sales um, uh, in an organization. So like when I worked, I worked for, uh, you know, you know, um, in in the sales function. So there was this um, company that I worked with. We were selling pages. We were selling pages, and it was a very difficult time in the sense the the paging industry was virtually shutting down. You know, it was moving on to mobiles, trans transitioning on to uh, mobile phones. But we were in that company at the wrong place, wrong time, you know, kind of thing. Uh, so we would sell one page. Uh, we would have like three, four disconnections the same day, people moving on to mobile. So it was very, the pressure was really um, so much. Um, so uh, the thing is, all the sales guys, you know, we had to, um, there would be, some inquiries coming in and it had to be shared with all the sales guys and there would be this um, you know, it'll come come to our customer service uh, uh, executives and they would actually give it out so the guys would do a lot of things you know like to to make sure that they get the one person you know they would probably uh, give money they would give gifts to the customer service executives just to make sure that they get everything and uh, all the sales um, inquiries uh, just to uh, go ahead and do that and uh, they would not share with others if, if it, there would be no teamwork there'd be heavy you know backstabbing and teamwork and so on so um, so in such a environment you know uh, to be a believer to be like a servant uh, leader it was very difficult you know it was extremely difficult but at the same time um, i think god just gave me the grace to do that 
uh, I don't know how to what extent I was, um, you know, uh, but of course I was, I was having my own issues as a believer in a lot of strongholds. But I, uh, but I, I remember, you know, uh, when I, as I was leaving the organization, um, because actually it shut down. Um, like one of the customer service executives saying, hey, this guy is a, is a very, very straightforward guy. You know, uh, all the other guys would come and do this. And and this this lady actually, there was an office get together and this lady shared that with my wife. You know, there was this get together, it was a dinner. And then she said, this, you know, very straightforward. I've seen a lot of sales guys, very straightforward. So um, it is possible. And the Lord would give victory. You know, the Lord would give openings, uh, like in the sense, there'll be a cold call. I'll just go there, and it'll end up. Uh, I'll end up finishing the sale, you know, and then some some corporate inquiry would come, and then so the Lord would give grace. So that's that's one of the things, right? Um, so this is uh, so one example that I could think of. Anyone else uh, wants to, you know, if if you worked in an organization, if you can just help share, and um, maybe it'll be helpful to Sri Kumar and the others also. Uh, please go ahead. Um, Yeah, Sam, please. Correct, Richard. Um, yeah, sure. Thank you, thank you, Pastor. Um, so uh, I I am a part of organization, and uh, we are kind of exploring this. So, so it's it's a very new organization, and we're just kind of doing few things. But some one of the things that we constantly are struggling with is defining the role of a leader, mm. and. Um, the more and more we explore into this, at least uh, in my mind, uh, what I'm realizing is uh, more than anything else, uh, it's, it's, it comes down to functioning. Like what is the function of a leader you know, um, rather than a position? So, so like for example, if, if uh, there's a guy whose job is to assign roles, like, okay, you be in charge of media, you be in charge of sound, you be so, so there, there is a role assigned. So, so we, we ourselves select a guy who we think has the wisdom, the experience to be able to assign roles. And uh, so uh, you can call him a leader, call him a driver. We, we, we're trying, I think this, the leader, uh, the word is so heavy you know culturally mm. immediately when someone says leader there's there's an automatic uh, hierarchy position created so that that creates a certain uh, mindset uh, the moment you hear someone being a leader so so for me for us we are thinking of functions uh, uh, you know who who is good for a particular role, a particular function, and and that person? What does that like? Like you were saying, you know, what empowerment does that person need? What training does the person need to be able to do that function properly? Um, and uh, in today's session, as you were sharing about the sons of Zebedee and and also Jesus washing his disciples' feet, something that um, that that I'm thinking of is. Um, I don't know the culture then, but I'm thinking again, uh, the culture there is predominantly of hierarchy. You know, there's like uh, first level, second level, third level, etc. So who gets to sit on the right hand and left hand are at a higher level than who gets to, you know. And uh, one of the things that I see uh, Jesus trying to do is bringing about like a flat structure mm. uh, and, and saying like, you know, so it's it's almost like going against the the structure of a hierarchical structure and bringing more of an equivalence and egalitarian structure um, is is what I'm sensing and and that to me is quite appealing. Hmm. So in a in a practical setting, like Sri Kumar asked, you know, um, what do you think would help um, you know to be a, a servant leader to serve others? You know, who may not see eye to eye with you, who might. Uh, you know, kind of you're saying you know, rebelling and all that. So how can you serve um, uh, such a team? How can you serve such a, you know, such colleagues as a servant leader? Uh, anything, any thoughts? I, um, I think for me in, in that case, so uh, two things. One is, uh, let's say if, if Sri Kumar was my team member and I'm, I'm the designated leader per se, 
Um, so I think something that would help me and Sri Kumar work together would be uh, a clarity in our roles, like you know what what uh, what position, what role uh, Sri, Kum- Sri Kumar has, and what role I have, mm-hmm. and and what do we need? Getting clarity in our roles and functions, like what does he need, uh, and how can I support him with that uh, versus. Mm-hmm. What do I need, and and uh, how can Sri Kumar help me support me with that? So I think yeah. for me, just come down to function and support supporting each other with that. Function. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that that word support uh, because you know the roles are defined, the roles are clearly defined. It comes with the job description, you know, the time you join, etc. So. Uh, they may not be an opportunity to redefine it, you know, um, unless it's, you know, a situation demands that. But uh, so in a, in a setting where, you know, it's it's already spelt out. It's already, so, yeah. So what you said about support, I think that's that's a good takeaway. So I'm like, so to say, you know, how can I support? You know, despite their personality, you know, despite their, despite our differences, how can I support? And that's a way of serving, right? Okay. Okay. Anyone else would like to share? Maybe if you have gone through a real life, uh, you know, setting, um, maybe I think that will also be helpful. Um, is Rupa here? Rupa, um, in your um, Haggai seminars, uh, or the thing, have you come across any case studies, any uh, real life settings? You can share that also. Otherwise, yeah, Chris, Tarun, anyone? Uh, maybe we'll, we'll. I think we'll yeah. take one more. Uh, yeah, Pastor. Um, uh, yeah. There are like uh, two things that come into my mind. One is uh, uh, in a setting where uh, I was actually a manager and uh, I had about forty plus team members, and one of these guys was quite different, a, a believer. <laughs> he was the only believer in my entire <laughs> team, but. Uh, uh, the kind of attitude that he carried. He was different. Yeah, he was different. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He literally on an appraisal discussion told me that promotion comes from God, not you. (laughs) So so he he, he is, he's so, and he, uh, so it's it's like setting the values uh, uh, very clearly and standing for them. Um, uh, so it's like a, a a raised up role or a raised up salary. These are not the motivations when you are working uh, at a workplace. When you are very clear about it, people really get confused what drives you. Like, you know, many a times uh, uh, there are some people at workplace. We know that if there is something that is uh, that needs to be done uh, without honoring the values, they say this guy cannot do it because that guy stands for the values very well and the organization knows because right from day one he is very hard on standing for the values so Mm -hmm. you you, when you want to do something wrong they always pick and choose who who is it that to give that job so you you should you should take a strong stand right from day one and do not budge no matter what like whoever it is because it sometimes it's over a period of time you might lose on something uh, momentarily but mm. over a period of time you uh, uh, people will know you for sta- standing for those values and that will mm. help on a uh, longer run uh, there are there will be bigger things that will come on your way and these smaller things that you let go of would would just be a test that you have uh, cleared yeah. yeah so values and uh, standing for them uh, so, so how do you bring that into serving uh, in a serving kind of a situation, Tarun? Like, um, if you could just clarify. Uh, yeah. So, uh, like at the end, when it comes to serving, uh, serving is not for the individual. Serving is always in the sense of accomplishing the purpose of what you have called for. Jesus. Uh, displayed servant leadership to show the uh, humility of like uh, the position of what he has come for not the person whom he is washing his feet no we, mm-hmm. we don't serve in an organization uh, uh, a particular individual we we serve the organization as a whole and stay aligned with the vision that the organization is called for uh, so 
as long as we stay focused on that it's easy to uh, make decisions because the things that come on our way uh, they all come on our way because uh, a, a boss who is very powerful is asking you to do something that's against the values set forth for the organization Mm-hmm. then you can clearly make a decision because you are here to serve the organization not the person the, the, mm-hmm. actually in ethics there are like three perspectives like utilitarian uh, justice and rights perspective uh, you know each one talks about one thing like utilitarian is all about for everyone's common good uh, and uh, involved with justice and the rights we are not compromising on the rights of individuals so we have to look at all the three perspectives and make a decision uh, that serves the purpose of the organization as a leader we are influencing for something good uh, not uh, something that is that's a purpose that has been established not an individual then it, it becomes more clearer on making the decision right right i think that was helpful yeah thank you yeah 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 rupa uh, i see the scripture that you have shared thank you yeah go ahead please sir just few thoughts uh, yeah. while we were sharing last time uh, the spirit of god was uh, ministering on to me on those lines on which will be helpful for the whatever we are discussing now i think mm. the one thing is uh, when we study about jesus uh, servant leadership uh his heart is completely in tune with his master the father god completely in tune with the master mm-hmm. and he knows just like uh, uh, tarun has shared he knows his master's plan and purpose completely and he right. is in, in obedience to it and he is very clear about his identity and authority and he doesn't have to prove himself to anyone there to uh he doesn't have any ego issues uh, when co- when we, he comes to that and uh, when i also realize that he is not only self seeking but he is also self sacrificing and calling his disciples to a model that to to sacrifice ourselves and empowering us to do that and right yeah that's what i realize sir and whenever i come across this difficult uh, situation where mm. we most of the time in ministry because she uh, brother shri kumar is also in ministry we face a uh, lot of opposition lot of people backbiting and all that it is part of the job mm-hmm. so when we take it as part of the job and just don't concentrate on those negative things but concentrate on the master who has called us and mm-hmm. just do the job as we are doing it on to them and each individual counts i think in the ministry because right. god in god's sight each one is very valuable and we have to respect them and when we start respecting them in spite of what they are doing to us and what they are trying to um plan or uh, hmm. scheme against us when we stand on this line of loving and serving and just doing our part and uh, not talking about them behind and just respecting them over the time we can win them over right over the time it takes a right. long time it is yeah. not done in a uh, day or two Right. because that person is very important to god and only god can give us that love for that person because we, we will only look at them as uh, when we see the negative qualities when we concentrate on them the mm. the whole purpose of god is lost and we cannot serve him as servant leaders that's right. what i learned sir thank you right thank you Uh, so i think both tarun and rupa uh, what you've said yeah yeah ibran yeah um yeah please go ahead yeah sorry i forgot yes yeah, thank you sir i i'm thinking that uh, when we talk about leadership we are talking about management and if we talk about management it means that we are helping people to do what they are supposed to do in the context of christ we could see that he had a standard and his purpose was to help us to meet up with that standard. So to me a leader is someone who stands with the standard and also helps the people especially those who are willing and obedient to meet up to that standard. So it's not about telling people to do certain things it's about standing with the people 
so that they can accomplish their own purpose. Mm. That is the role of a leader. That's what I think, sir. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Abraham. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was that was a good insight. And also, yeah, like what I was saying, um, like what Tarun and Rupa shared also, uh, I think the, 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 the main important thing is to not lose sight of the big picture. Um, like in the, in the case of uh, you know, the Lord Jesus, he was very clear about what the Father wanted. And, uh, and that was the, the, the big, we wouldn't look at purpose. Um, so that was something that he was going after. And um, like Rupa also rightly pointed out, well, people are connected and people are precious and people are part of it, right? Uh, but at the same time, not at the cost of fulfilling that purpose. I think that's what uh, Tarun was also sharing. You know, like, uh, uh, well, you're serving the organization and people are there, but then if if there is a conflict between like serving the organization and serving the people and, and not really, you know, these the, the ethics that he shared, um, the utilitarian rights and justice perspectives of the ethics, um, if there is a compromise in that, without compromising that, right? Of course, but um, you know, uh, uh, without, without compromising that, if there is a conflict, then uh, one has to take a stand. Right? So, uh, so, so the thing is, if the the the, the reason why most times, you know, uh, if whether it's uh, you know loving someone, right? Uh, you you love them. And uh, but then love also involves um, communicating uh, something in truth. Right. If we lose that perspective of truth, and uh, you know, and lose that perspective of uh, holiness and everything, it, it is love. Um, you know, we are uh, you know communicating love and uh, you know and demonstrating love. But if we lose the perspective of truth uh, in demonstrating love, then you know, then we, then it is it is misplaced love, right? So um, I think that's that's when the, the that's where the challenge uh, is, and that's where the problems come in, and that's where it becomes uh, you know what people call sloppy agape. You know, it, it, agape is, is good; it's it's very uh, strengthening, transformative, uh, empowering. But if it's uh, it's misplaced, uh, uh, then it's it becomes an issue. Yeah. So. Prabhaka shares, and he says, I think one of the ways of serving as a leader is to show others how to be successful. Yeah, like how they did it, kind of declaring that I'm not a competition to you, but somehow wanting to see your growth. I think that's um, very true, Prabhaka, and, and a person who is not really constrained by, you know, ego, is not constrained by wanting to serve oneself, who's totally liberated, uh, would do that, you know, who has a very uh, you know, is, is secure in the identity, you know, as who we are in Christ, would really be liberated to, you know, to to do that. Right. Right. Thank you. So we'll take a break, and then uh, we will come back at eleven. Right. Okay.